Hi, welcome back. I've been doing some testing with Azure Auto Manage Preview lately, and it seems like a pretty interesting tool that can be used to quickly onboard Azure virtual machines into some of Microsoft's best practices. I originally was going to do these upcoming videos on Auto Manage Preview. However, just a few days ago at Ignite, Microsoft announced the general availability of Azure Auto Manage. This video is going to be an overview of setting up Auto Manage to work with your subscription, as well as an overview of some of the main features of Auto Manage. Then we're going to go ahead and onboard a couple of VMs just to see what happens. I'll take a deeper dive into a couple of the features in some future videos, such as using an ARM template to create configuration profiles, applying Auto Manage with Azure Policy, and also some considerations when using Azure Auto Manage across subscriptions. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive right in. First, let me mention that there is a frequently asked questions page that I'll be putting in the description with some good information on prerequisites for enabling Auto Manage, RBAC requirements, and even more. So I definitely recommend you check it out. Let's take a look at the prerequisites. Azure Auto Manage requires the following. Virtual machines must use supported versions of Windows or Linux and they have provided links to versions for both operating systems here. So I won't go into too much detail with these. Next, VMs must be in a supported region. If you look further down on the page, there is a link to view the supported regions. However, when you click it, it brings you to a page with another link that you need to click. Once I click on that, we can see a matrix of products and their regional availability. I can type in Auto Manage in the search box and then click on Azure Auto Manage to narrow this down. From here, I can see the regions where Auto Manage is currently supported. However, as of the recording of this video, it doesn't seem to have been updated to general availability yet, so you may need to keep checking back. But for now, you should be able to use it in any of the regions listed here as in preview. The next requirement listed is that the user setting up auto manage for a VM needs to have the correct permissions. And these are all laid out in the section below. The next few requirements are that only non scale set VMs are supported and sandbox subscriptions and trusted launch VMs are not supported at this time. There are some good questions and answers in this article, so definitely bookmark it for future use. Okay, let's switch over to the Azure portal. The first thing that needs to be done in order to use Azure Auto Manage is we need to register the Auto Manage resource provider with the subscription that we're planning to use. In the search bar at the top, type subscriptions. Then under services, click on subscriptions. Then let's go ahead and open the subscription that we plan to use with Auto Manage. Next, click on Resource Providers on the left hand side. And finally, in the filter by name box, type in Auto Manage. If Microsoft.AutoManage says unregistered here, you will need to select it and then click on the register button. I already have it registered in my subscription, so I'm given the option to either re-register or unregister the provider. Okay, let's take a look at Auto Manage next. From the search bar, type in Auto Manage, and then click on Auto Manage under Services. You will first be greeted with a couple of options. From here, we can manage Auto Manage machines or configuration profiles. Let's start with configuration profiles. By default, there are two built-in configuration profiles out of the box. These configuration profiles are basically a list of configurations that Microsoft recommends as a best practice for both dev test environments and production environments. You can choose to use these out of the box configuration profiles, or you can create a custom profile that is tailored to your needs. Let's take a look at the services that can be configured in these profiles. I'm not actually going to create a custom profile yet, but I'm going to click on create here so I can run through what the available options are before I review the existing profiles. Clicking create opens up the create a custom profile blade on the right hand side. From here, I can scroll down to see the list of services that can be configured by this profile. First, we have the backup service. Backups can be enabled here 
and you can configure specifics such as backup frequency and retention details. If enable backup is not checked off, then backups will not be configured for VMs onboarded to this profile, and you can see that the backup details are no longer available to configure. Next is Microsoft Anti-Malware. When enabled, Microsoft Anti-Malware will be implemented on Windows VMs only, and you can specify files and folders to be excluded, as well as scanning details. If anti-malware is not desired, just uncheck the box here, just like we did with backups. Next, we can choose to enable Machine Insights Monitoring. Note that it says if this service is selected, a Log Analytics workspace will also be selected. We'll explore that a little bit later. After that, you can enable Auto Manage Machine Configuration, which I haven't personally explored much yet, but that's next on my list. After that, we can choose whether to enable update management and change tracking on the VM. Next up is Microsoft Defender for Cloud. This checkbox is enabled by default and cannot be unchecked. Originally, I thought this was used to configure Defender at the OS level, but this is to enable Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Basically, Defender for Cloud assesses the security posture of your cloud resources and can alert and make recommendations to help keep those resources secure. Next, we have Enable Azure Automation Account and Log Analytics Workspace. You'll notice that these checkboxes cannot be changed as well. However, they're driven by the choices that were made above. Let's see what happens when I uncheck Machine Insights Monitoring, Update Management, and Change Tracking in Inventory. You can see here that the checkboxes for an Azure Automation account and Log Analytics workspace are now unchecked. That's because this profile will not require them, since we unchecked those other boxes. Finally, there are the options to enable Azure Boot Diagnostics and to enable Windows Admin Center. Now let's close this blade and take a look at the built-in profiles. First, I'm going to open the Dev Test profile. Here, most services are enabled except for backups and machine insights monitoring. Now, if I close that and go to the production profile, I can see that most of the services have been enabled, including backups and machine insights. The only service not enabled by the production profile is Windows Admin Center. Okay, great. Now that we've explored the configuration profiles a little, Let's take a look at auto-manage machines on the left-hand side. This screen will list any virtual machines that have already been onboarded to Azure Auto-Manage, if there are any. And there is also a button to enable on an existing machine. Let's click on Enable on Existing Machine. First, we're going to need to choose which profile to use. Since I don't have any custom profiles, I'm going to use the built-in production profile. Make sure that's selected and then click Next. On this screen, we can see a list of existing virtual machines. Alternatively, you can also use the search box to find virtual machines by name. I'm going to choose one of my existing VMs running Windows. Then click Next to review and create. If the machine is eligible, click on Create. The onboarding process will begin. This may take a little while to complete, so let's go ahead and add another machine. Click on Enable on Existing Machine again. This time, I'm going to use the Dev Test Profile. Now I'm going to select my second VM, then Review and Create. Now I'll click on Create to start the onboarding process. You'll notice that the first VM is still in progress, and the second VM is listed as new. I'll pause the video here to wait for the onboarding process to finish. Now that both machines have finished onboarding, they should both say conformant if everything configured successfully. Let's go ahead and compare the two virtual machines now. If I click on my first VM, which I configured using the production profile, I can confirm the auto-manage settings by clicking on auto-manage under operations on the left. From here, I can see that this VM is using the production profile and I also have the option to disable auto-manage, 
which will remove the configuration profile and the machine will no longer be managed by AutoManage. Now let's click on Backup under Operations. Under Backup, I can see that backups have been enabled for this virtual machine using a default backup vault. And there is also a backup policy for Azure Best Practices production. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's close this blade and go back to AutoManage Machines. Now I'm going to click on my second VM, which I configured with the dev test profile. Let's go down to backup under operations. Here we can see that since this VM is using the dev test profile, backups have not been configured for it. Back under auto manage machines, if you want to stop managing a VM, you can select it from the list and then click disable. Then click OK to confirm that you want to disable auto management for this selected machine. That machine will then be removed from Azure Auto Manage. OK, let's go back to the virtual machine that is using the production profile. Then let's check out backups. You may remember that I showed you the default backup vault and policy that was used here. These were not created by me ahead of time. They were created by Azure Auto Manage. Auto Manage will create a backup vault for each region containing virtual machines that it is managing. This one was created in East US 2 since my VM is in East US 2. If you were to onboard a virtual machine in Central US, Auto Manage will then create a new vault in Central US. I'm going to copy the name of this backup vault here and search for it at the top. This will bring up the recovery services vault that AutoManage created. To see which VMs are configured to use this vault, click on Backup Items under the Protected Items section. Here, I can see that there are Azure Virtual Machines being backed up to this vault. Clicking on Azure Virtual Machine will bring up a list of VMs that are being backed up. Here, I can see my first virtual machine that I just onboarded along with a couple of tests that I ran earlier. If I close this blade and go back to the vault, I can also take a look at backup policies under Manage. Here we can find the policy that was created for the Production Auto Manage profile. If we were to create a custom profile with backups enabled, a new policy would be created here as well. Speaking of custom Auto Manage profiles, let's go ahead and create a new one. Back under Auto Manage in the portal, click on Configuration Profiles. Then click on Create. On the Create a Custom Profile blade, let's give this profile a name. Then we need to select a resource group to store this profile in. You could have created a new resource group to drop this in if you like, but I'm going to put mine in the default resource group that AutoManage created for the backup vault. I'm also going to leave backup enabled for this demo. I'm just going to modify the retention days to 7, which is the minimum. I'm also going to uncheck Microsoft Anti-Malware since maybe I already have some antivirus software running on my VMs which will take care of that. Then I'll leave everything else default and click Create. Now I have a new custom profile in the list. Let's go back to Auto Manage Machines. Now I'm going to re-onboard that virtual machine that I disabled in the previous step, but this time I'm going to use the new custom profile. So click on Enable on Existing Machine, then choose Custom Profile. Then, in the drop-down that comes up, select the desired custom profile. Click on Next to choose a machine, then select the machine that you want to onboard and then click Next. Finally, click Create. Now I can see that my second VM is being onboarded into the prod test configuration profile that I just created. Now that my second VM has been onboarded, let's go check it out to see if backups are now configured. When I navigate to backups under that VM, I can now see where it was previously not set up for backups is now configured to backup to the backup vault, and it also has a new backup policy for the new custom profile. The last thing I wanted to go over in this video is some of the resources that get created when using AutoManage. As I mentioned previously, 
AutoManage created this default backup vault. I also mentioned previously that it will create an Azure automation account and a log analytics workspace if needed. Let's go take a look at those resources. You could find the resource group by going to resource groups and then looking for the default resource group, I believe is the name. But for this video, I'm gonna copy the name of this backup vault and search for it at the top. Then from there, I'm gonna to go to properties. And from here, I can copy the name of the resource group. Now, I like to group my resources by type to make it easier to read. Here, we can see the recovery services vault that we were just looking at, along with an automation account, a log analytics workspace, and finally, some solutions for change tracking, updates, and VM insights. That's a basic overview of what you can do with Azure Auto Manage and how to start creating profiles and onboarding virtual machines. Next, I'll be doing some videos on some specific Auto Manage features, so be sure to keep an eye out for those. And as always, I'm always open to suggestions about content you'd like to see covered on this channel. So feel free to leave a comment and I'll see if it's something that I can get to. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Thanks for watching.